Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about hyperlordotic and kypholordotic postures. Uh, so they're very similar, but the key difference is that in hyperlordotic posture, uh, we have increased lumbar lordosis that does not cause compensation of the other regions of the spine. So in hyperlordotic posture, there is exaggerated lumbar lordosis. So the, the curve in the lumbar spine is exaggerated beyond normal neutral position. Uh, so that's lumbar lordosis. It also includes anterior pelvic tilt. And I included a link to an explanation of pelvic tilt in the description below if you'd like a review of what that means and how to assess it. A hyperlordotic posture can be caused by all sorts of things. This is a very common uh, postural abnormality. Uh, it could be caused by shortened hip flexors that's pulling the pelvis into anterior pelvic tilt. Uh, could be caused by a large anterior abdominal mass, which can mean lots of things. Uh, most commonly, that can be uh, during pregnancy. So that would be an example of a large anterior abdominal mass. It could also be somebody who uh, is carrying weight in the abdomen. So someone with a large abdominal belly, essentially. Um, that would be considered a large anterior abdominal mass. So anything that's shifting uh, center of mass of the trunk in the forward direction um, can lead to hyperlordotic posture. Um, and then anyone with poor postural awareness, so it could just be a matter of sort of slipping into this posture and not being aware of the need to pull it back. Uh, ligamentous laxity, so ligaments that are not uh, strong enough or uh, maintaining the stability of the spine adequately, uh, and muscle weakness. So if the muscles that are pulling against in the opposite direction of the hip flexors, if those muscles are weak, uh, then that person might slip into this hyperlordotic posture. So when that hyperlordosis causes com compensatory uh, changes in the thoracic spine and cervical spine, then it's kypholordotic posture. Uh, so this has that same increased lumbar lordosis like we just talked about, um, but when that lumbar lordosis persists long enough, that causes compensatory changes on the thoracic spine. So in that case, we'd have an exaggerated kyphotic curve of the thoracic spine, um, and then that usually is going to cause the cervical spine also to increase the lordotic curve. Um, because if we have an increased kyphotic curve, so we're kind of rounding forward in the um, the thoracic region, so the where the ribs attach, essentially, this midsection of the spine, if we're hunched forward, if we're rounded forward that way, then the neck has to arch in the opposite direction to keep the head facing forward, um, because otherwise the kyphotic curve, if that's exaggerated in the thoracic spine, that would have us looking down. But if we're going to be walking around and we need to look where we're going, then we then arch the neck up, and so then that would be uh, lordosis in the cervical spine. And then also that usually comes with forward head posture. Um, so in kyphalordotic posture, you see changes in the lengths of muscles throughout the trunk um, because the mus certain muscles will lengthen or shorten in response to this posture. And if somebody is in this posture chronically, uh, then those muscle changes in length can be chronic also. And so then they'll have muscles that are hypertonic and hypotonic. Um, and I included a link in the description also to cover what hypertonicity and hypotonicity also mean. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.